Imagine the freedom of initiating, monitoring, and even controlling your printing tasks from anywhere. Well, with the Creality Box 2.0, you can now do that at an affordable price as well. Unlike traditional routes that involve Raspberry Pis, cameras, firmware flashing, and intricate network setups, the Creality Box 2.0 stands as a hassle-free solution for this. Let me take you through the process of setting up and using the Creality Box 2.0, as well as the software that is required to use it, so that you can feel comfortable if this is an upgrade you want to pursue in the near future. When purchasing the Creality Box, you get the Creality Box 2.0 itself, two USB cables, one for the power on the Creality Box and the other to connect it to your printer of choice. The box also includes two additional modular USB points to make sure that you connect it to any printer. And lastly, you get one 8GB TF card. If we take a closer look at the Creality Box 2.0 itself, you can see on the left hand side you have a slot for the TF card and the reset button. On the back is a connection port with Ethernet, two USB connection ports, and the power connection port. On the front, there is an array of LED lights that represent the connection to your printer, the internet, and as well as checking whether the TF card is being read. The Creality webcam is already wired with a decent length USB cable, and it also comes with a small but flexible stand that you can use to set it up. It is a little bit flimsy, but it does the job. Now for the setup of the Creality Box. The first thing I did was to take the Ethernet cable and plug it in to the Ethernet port on the Creality Box. I then took the TF card and then put it into the slots available for it. I then took one of the USB cables that came with the kit and plugged it into a 5 volt power outlet, then plugging it into the Creality Box to provide it with power. After providing it with power, after a few seconds, the light started flashing, indicating connection to different sources. I then took the other USB cable and plugged it into one of the USB slots available, as well as the other end into the printer. Here you can see the Creality Box on the table with its connection to the power source in the wall, a cable running from it to the printer, plugged into the printer in the front, and then the other cable running over top onto a webcam. I did end up moving this webcam to the right hand side on the printer as it was a better view and actually high enough. Now for the app itself. To use the Creality Box, you need to download the Creality Cloud app. It is free by default, but it requires you to create a profile to connect your printer. There is also a premium version available. After downloading the app and creating your own profile, the first thing that we're going to do is go to the bottom of the screen and click on Workbench. After clicking on Workbench, it will take you to a screen where you will have no devices currently listed. I already have one listed because I tested it beforehand. What you're going to do then is go to the top right corner and click on the plus icon. You will then see a ton of machines popping up for you to choose from. What we're going to do though is go to the left hand side and click on accessories. When clicking on accessories, you'll see that the Creality Box 2.0 is one of the options for you to pick. Click on that. It'll then bring up a menu for you to check your setup of the Creality Box 2.0. Once you've followed all of the steps listed, you can then say that you have done everything on the list and continue forward. It will then search for the Bluetooth signature of the Creality Box 2.0. Once you've selected your device, it will bring up a menu asking you to select between Wi-Fi or wired connection. Because I'm using my mobile phone, I'm using Wi-Fi. It will then ask you to join the Wi-Fi signal sent out by the Creality Box 2.0. All you have to do is go to your settings and then join it from there. After connecting to the Wi-Fi signal sent out by the Creality Box 2.0, it will then prompt you to select and enter the password to the Wi-Fi of your home, which the Creality Box 2.0 is connected to. Once the connection has been successfully established to your Wi-Fi, you can then rename your Creality Box 2.0. If you have only one printer connected to it, I would suggest naming the Creality Box whichever printer it is you are using. Once you have successfully renamed it, you have created your own instance of your Creality Box 2.0. If you then go back to the Workbench tab, it should show up. And now you can observe your printer from anywhere. Some of the features that the Creality app gives you access to is to heat up the nozzle and the heat bed. You can select the temperature or just go with the defaults that are listed there. After clicking on the XY Home icon, the printer will start homing to the center of the build plate. I did notice, however, if you try and move the printer from that point, it will ask you to re-home the printer each and every time, which basically just sends it going back to home the X, Y and Z axis and returning to the center just to go into an infinite loop. At least homing and heating up the bed and setting up the print is something you do whilst you're still at your printer or at the location of your printer. 
So there shouldn't be any need to really do it through the Creality app itself. Moving on to printing with the Creality app. The Creality app gives you two options of prints that you can start. One of them being G-code that's already been pre-uploaded to the TFCOD, which is now in the Creality Box 2.0. The other is to use the client slicing function on the Creality Cloud app. For this video though, I am going to use G-code that was sliced in Cura on my laptop. Let me know if you want to see the cloud slicing functionality as well. I might do that in a short or a future video. To upload any G-code to that TFCOD, you just have to remove the TFCOD from the Creality Box 2.0 and then upload it as you would normally to print on a printer. You then just reinsert it into the TF card, then it should be found on the Creality Cloud app. To access it, you click on Select TF Card File. From there, you'll see a ton of your files that are currently on the TF Card pop up. You just select the one that you want to print now, which is Totoro G Code in my case. Once you've started the print, it will then heat up the nozzle and bed and go through all the pre print setup. On the Creality Cloud app, on whichever device you selected to run it through, you'll then be able to monitor the print from that device. Here you can see the temperature on the nozzle, the temperature on the bed, the printing speed, as well as the file that you selected, and the amount of time it has already been printing, and how much time is still remaining. It also gives you the options to pause and or stop the print as well. All that's left now to do is just to wait for the print to finish. I really hope that this video was informative or helpful to at least somebody out there. If you would like to know anything more about the Creality Box 2.0 or the Creality Webcam, there is a product linked in the description. Join me next time as we go through the entire unboxing, setup and first print process with the new Creality K1. See you next time.